Now, it's not easy for Western journalists to get much access to senior members of ISIS. The group has killed journalists, taken them hostage, and indeed still holds James Cantley. But one journalist, Suad McKennett, has gone behind the lines of jihad. A Muslim woman born in Germany, she was one of those who identified jihadi John as Mohammed Mwazi. She's written her experiences into a new book. It's called I Was Told to Come Alone. She's with me now. Good evening. It takes some courage to, you know, leave your phone, leave everybody behind and go into a strange place mm. with people who you know have been holding journalists. And yet that's what you did in order to, to meet them. Tell us about your meeting with the, actually with the boss of Jihadi John, Abu Yusuf, for example. Yeah, yeah. Well, Evan, it was uh, during a time where we didn't really know what is ISIS. And uh, it was a couple of weeks after the so-called caliphate was declared. And um, I, like other journalists, we were very curious to understand what uh, are the objectives of this caliphate? What do they want? Uh, how does it function? So I tried to negotiate with um, people within ISIS um, to, to meet with somebody, but somebody who actually had also something to say, mm -hmm. not just a foot soldier. And um, at the beginning, they had the idea that I should go into the caliphate, which my boss absolutely refused. So we found this middle ground where, you know, we decided to meet alongside the Turkish Syrian border region. But um, the things changed constantly. For example, we were supposed to meet during the day and then they pushed it further into the, the night. And then by the end of the day, they decided also that I had to come alone, which is one of the reasons why the book is called I Was Told to Come Alone. And they asked me to leave behind any ID cards and phones. Now, as a journalist, I mean, you know, we have to sometimes make a decision in terms of is the story worth it? Mm -hmm. Now, it was a period of time where we had so many questions and I thought that we have to talk to them and know what they say, who they are. We have to figure out who they are in order to understand how this caliphate really what functions. Were, what were they like? I mean, in, in, in human terms, mm -hmm. this guy, you meet him in the desert, it, it, it drives you off into the desert it, it, in some part of a remoter part. Is he demonic? Is he perfectly ordinary and civil? I mean, what sort of person? So, you know, this is the thing, uh, Evan, um, a lot of people don't understand um, some of those guys, uh, especially this guy, turned out he grew up in Europe. He um, had a similar background. I uh, was able to figure out also that, uh, you know, um, where he grew up. Um, I learned uh, who he was, his true ad identity. And uh, he didn't come from a deprived family. Um, he was highly educated. He spoke several languages. He um, uh, did study and he talked to me about politics. Like most of these guys, when I meet them, whether it's ISIS, Al-Qaeda or the Taliban, they talk to me, they discuss foreign policy mainly. And religion is something that comes later. And I believe that a lot of people don't don't understand that they they see it very often as you know a war um, of Islam against the West but it's not it's not that those guys they discuss with you foreign policy issues mainly one of the, the sort of striking things though is, 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 is I think a lot of us view them and think how can you talk to ISIS because there's no you, you know there are other terrorist groups around the world who you can have a conversation with they have a cause they have a, 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 a set of objectives and you can possibly negotiate over those things. We're not going to negotiate with people over their desire to impose a caliphate over the whole of the world or whatever it is. Do, did you find you could have a sort of a sensible conversation, to, to put it bluntly? Well, sensible is a, is a different word to use here. It's a very yeah. difficult word to use here because, you know, I, um, you can see in the book that the debate we had turned into a heated discussion at some stage because I challenged him and I challenged any person that I interview. It's not like I go there and I sit and listen. No, I challenged him. I challenged the ideology and I asked him, how can you, this is not serious. Or, or, or Iraq, those are not your countries. How can you come here and basically just declare a caliphate? And, and that's the other thing people don't understand very often. It's not, um, it's not like ISIS against the West. I mean, ISIS is going against any person, yeah. no matter if uh, he or she is Muslim, uh, Jewish, Christian, or has no religion, if they don't sign up for the ideology. Has a lot of enemies. Look, just a, a final one. You obviously in the book make an enormous effort to understand what motivates and animates causes like this. How difficult is it to avoid getting into, from understanding 
too kind of apologizing for or explaining no, away. Well, or here's the thing, Evan. I mean, I have sorry for interrupting you. This is not a book that, ex that uh, apologizes or that no, is no, an excuse doesn't. for terrorism. Absolutely not. But I believe, Evan, it's very important if um, people really want to find solutions, we have to understand that radicalization starts in our societies. Those people, Mohammed Mwazi, Jihadi John, and many like him, they grew up in the West. They, are, they, they got radicalized in the West. And there's a reason why. And I believe if, if people want to find solutions, they have to start much earlier before they get radicalized. So, Ed McKenna, thank you very much. The book's called I Was Told to Come Alone. Thank you very much. Thank you.